then and then the state said you paid me four thousand, but I'm going to give you two thousand back. Well, that means that you didn't really pay four thousand because they refunded two thousand. So what should you do? Should I go back to the prior year tax return and put only two thousand here, which is actually the proper amount I paid after the refund was refunded back to me? That would be tedious to do. Or we could do a cash-based system and try to fix it going forward. And that's why you might have to include in income the refund that you get in the following period. So that's going to be how that that uh, that kind of plays out. Now, remember that that does get a lot more confusing than you would think at first glance. Meaning if you got a tax refund of $2,000 because you paid $4,000 in the prior year, uh, then the question is, well, if you didn't itemize last year, then you didn't get any benefit and you wouldn't have to include it in income. If you did itemize, it's still questionable as to whether you've got a benefit from the taxes or how much of a benefit you got. Because notice that that my standard deduction right here is is twelve thousand uh, nine fifty. So what if my itemized deductions just barely cleared that? What if the, my itemized deductions came out to be like 13,000 or something? Then I just barely cleared the 12,940. So even though I got a $4,000 state tax deduction and I was itemizing, I really only got maybe $50 of it, right? Because I because the 12,950 I would have gotten in any case. So it gets messy in terms. So that's why the tax software is quite useful to determine uh, if you got a benefit in that case. And that's why I would suggest if you are dealing with a new client that had a Schedule A in the prior year, that it's worthwhile to data input the prior year tax return in the prior year software, even though it might cost more, roll it over so that the software can help you out with some of those rollover situations like uh, the, the refund situation. Now, a similar thing could happen for the other taxes, like the like if you had this sales tax, then you might have to include it in other income, like down here, if you've got a refund uh, situation for the other taxes that you paid. But that's a little bit more unusual of a situation. Now, you also might think, well, that would lead people possibly to try to, like you could try to say, if I had a lot of income this year and my tax bracket is gonna be higher, you could, you know, people may say, well, I'm going to try to withhold a lot uh, this year so that so that my it lowers my income this year and I'll be at higher tax brackets this year because my income was higher. And then when I get the refund next year, I'll include it in income next year. And and because I'm at lower tax brackets next year, it'll be a net benefit. People can try to play a little manipulative games like that with the cutoff. And you got and, and the reason that's the problem with a cash based kind of system. So you got to you got to be you got to be careful whenever that idea of that idea comes into play. Well, I'm going to I'm going to prepay all my expenses this year or something. Sometimes the tax code will limit you in terms of how much you can kind of prepay, but it's they have a little bit of a difficulty doing that with the state taxes because the state tax has a progressive tax system, so it's quite likely that people have no idea how much to pay for the taxes because it's a pay as you go system and a progressive tax system. So, so there's that. All right. And then we also could have included in here, you got to be careful of the cutoff kind of situations because if, if for example, I made estimated tax payments or, or say I got a refund from my state taxes last year that I rolled over, roll over or into the current year because I'm a Schedule C business, then then that is something that will typically be included in the taxes as well. So let's take a look at that. So if I had my estimated tax payments, so now I'm not having payments necessarily withheld from the W-2, although I still have those, but what if I need to make estimated tax payments as well, which are often done with like a Schedule C business? If there was an overpayment applied from 2021 and you apply it then to the taxes, let's say it was another thousand, then that is going to be included in here as well. So now my state taxes went up to 5,000. So, so that's something you gotta, you've got to kind of be aware of uh, as well if you're not a W-2 employee or if you have the, the kind of cutoff situation between when you paid the tax and what year 
uh, it should be applied to. Also, if I made a payment in the current year for taxes that were for 2021 for prior year taxes, but I paid them in 2022, that may be included in the Schedule A because again, they're tied to generally a, a cash-based system when you paid them, not an accrual-based system when the tax year uh, that's being applied to. So for example, if you paid with 2021 state tax return, $1,000, let's say, then that was applied to tax year 2021, but you paid it in 2022. So it increased my amount here by 6,000, by 1,000 again to 6,000. So it's on, it's basically generally on kind of a, a cash-based system. And again, if you're using tax software, it will usually help you to pick that stuff up but then you want to kind of double check it. If you're looking at this number and if it's, you want to say, how is the system calculating? Calculating results. That if it's coming from the sales, the, the, the taxes, your income taxes you paid for the state, then it would be easy if it just came from the W-2, but you also want to think about that cutoff kind of stuff. Did I have a refund last year? Did I owe money last year? If I owe money in 2021 and I paid it, uh, in 2021, then I, I paid for 2021 in 2022. When I filed the 2021 tax return by April 15th, 2022, then that might be included in here as well. And you want to get that, that kind of cutoff problem situated. So then you can have the personal property taxes. This is often with like the DMV, like vehicle tax and whatnot. And you've got to make sure that you take into consideration the, the deductible part of the value of it. So I'll just say 160 and pull that on over. So that's gonna be important. It's usually gonna be a relatively small, of course, in comparison to the property tax and the state taxes, but could still be relevant, worth picking up, of course. 